This is the city of Lugansk. We are now inside the barricade, which has been set up around the perimeter of the square. People are on guard here, keeping watch over our city. They keep watch round the clock. There are no weapons or troops here. You can see for yourself the barricades made of tires and barbed wire. This particular section has been reinforced to repel potential attacks, which may come at any time of the day or night. What has our government, excuse me, this Kiev, junta done to unite Ukraine? They've mobilized their army. Excuse me, but against whom are they mobilizing? Who are the aggressors? Where are they? I've made some pies, laid a clean tablecloth, and I'm waiting for this aggressor to come and capture me. When is he going to come? Then they disconnected our televisions. After that, they called us a diaspora. How could we be a diaspora? There are 8 million of us here who just speak a different language. 20 million, not 8. No, I'm talking about the number of Russian-speaking people here. How long are they going to bully us? I can sing a song in Ukrainian. I can recite you a poem in Ukrainian. What do you think about how Ukrainians and Russians get on together? We're all Slavs. We have to live in peace. We're brothers. We shouldn't fight each other. We're one people. We're all brothers. My homeland's behind me. Russia is our homeland. I have an aunt in Russia and friends in Novorossiysk. We can't go to war against each other. I don't even like to use the word. This is the 21st century. How can two Slavic peoples go to war? And what are we supposed to make of today's order from the so-called Kiev government? The so-called Kiev government gave the order to kill their own people in Slavyansk. How is it even possible? I don't know what to say. They don't care about the Geneva Accord. Fascists. There are OSCE monitors wandering about all over the place. But what's going on? I can't figure it out. None of us can. Who is in charge of this madhouse? We were just getting on with our lives and not bothering anyone. If they want to join the EU, that's fine with us. We're not against the West. But we've always been friends with Russia. The Russians don't interfere in our business, and we've always got on well. We've no reason to quarrel either with Russia or the West. So why send in troops? It's just ugly. This is our home. We've got a culture and a language of our own. What right do other people have to come here and start laying down the law? Both my grandfathers were killed in World War II. I'll never sing glory to Ukraine, glory to Bandera. I hope they get the message. All those responsible will have to be tried at The Hague. Why send troops here? They should be arresting all those terrorists in Kiev instead. All of the presidential candidates, the military junta, the Nazis who gave orders to kill their own people. Just because their culture and their views are different. I'm just standing up for myself. I'm not a politician. Here's our Kalashnikov. Yeah, it's the Kalashnikov, the latest model. That's our automatic. We don't have any other weapons. Yarosh, head of the right sector, is assembling a hit squad called Donbass. Once it's assembled, he's going to target us. We're just unarmed people who are simply trying to protect our legitimate interests. He's made an announcement promising to pay ordinary soldiers $1,000 and officers $5,000.
Тихо, тихо, тихо. Вот этого надо да, Хлопцы, не пейте, я его знаю, хлопцы, не пейте. Why so? Because there's injustice going on in our country. There was a coup, an illegal takeover of power. And naturally, the new authorities are setting up their own rules. Anyone who disagrees is removed by any means possible, either put in prison or killed. These are their rules. БТР пытались свалить. Ты в кого стреляешь, ты? Ты в кого стрелять собрался? В кого ты стрелять собрал? В кого? Шла, что ты автомат достал? Глуши! Глуши, да! Глуши! Да до, до греха мне доводи! Ты понимаешь, сейчас люди кинутся, тебе и автомат не поможет! Да вытаскивать их из того танка! Глуши машину! Сзади люди спереди люди! Пацаны, не трогайте! Не трогайте! Не трогайте! Не трогайте! Давайте без крика! Подожди! Какая у вас задача? Сиди! Подожди! На my name is Natalia Safonova, and I live in the city of Krasnodon. When the revolution began, the miners kept working. They were working until a few days ago. Yesterday, on April 22nd, at 9 p.m., a demonstration began here, in the Young Guard Square. Today is April 23rd, and it still hasn't broken up. Please tell us, how do you feel about the right sector's actions in Ukraine? You could call it Nazism. Are you afraid of Nazism? Of course not. Why would we be afraid? Not all the miners around Donbass have risen up yet. If the whole of Donbass rises up together, it'll be game over for everyone. Do you know that a soldier was killed in Molodogvardiks for refusing to fight? This is just the beginning. Yeah, right. This is just the beginning. But how long will it last for? Well, I've no idea. We're doing our best. Standing here trying to put an end to it. I can say one thing only. If the miners rise up, it will be worse than Maidan. A million times worse. Our people in the Lugansk region are Russians in their hearts. Our people are Russian at heart. They gather here and chant, Russia. I'm sorry, but they wouldn't be able to use money to bring 10, 20 or even 30,000 people together to shout, Russia. And they wouldn't be coming here daily to bring us porridge, eggs and financial help, you see? The point of our activity here is to represent the interests of the people. If the people say so, then that's how it'll be. That is, we do what the people say. And if they say otherwise, that means we'll do so as well. Едут к нам в Мариуполь! Да сколько их, ничего себе! Так что там, ящики эти разрушают? Ракеты, что ли? О, Катюша! Это град, Радь и Катюша! Катюша! А что они собираются? Колонна с машин 30, наверное, блин. Ну это от, от Мариуполя сколько? Километров 60. Танки, танки. Глянь, там ты шо? Да пуш... Пожалуйста, скажи людям, стол оставляет в машине, выходит туда под стенку. Для чего? Для того, 
Не связано с словами, а то есть стрелять по нам. Какие на стоит там, блин, не... Две минуты, б***ь, они горят все, б***ь. Они Пусть уходят, пацаны. Вы говорили, что они едут, блин. Куда они ел? Со словами, б***ь, не уел. Милиция приедет, заберет полы. Наем оружие гаишникам в багажник, сложите автоматы, боекомплект, хай уводят. Почему? Командир, давай приказ. Молодцы, пацаны, что так поступили. Молодцы, ребята, сдавайте, сдавайте. Что за оружие нормально, молодцы. Молодцы. Больше проконтролируйте, чтобы оружие не пошло никуда. И не ездите сюда за словами. Не слушайте, не слушайте, что вам говорят. Вы на народ идете с оружием. Мы с голыми руками стоим. Давай. Максим, Максим. Что такое? Где? Урал блокировали возле поста ГАИ, он с ящиками, с оружием. Ребята, можно отъехать? Можно ящик. Да я не знаю, хлопцы, что в ящик. Я сейчас скрывать начну. Да зачем их скрывать? Едите куда, мужики. Куда едете? Выключите это самое. Едите куда? Едите куда? Давайте группу на пол. Письменное распоряжение приказа где? Письменное распоряжение приказа о дислокации, на какое место прибыть. А как вы едете? У вас должен быть дорожный лист, должен быть приказ. А что приехали? Приехали, что? Приехал, да, что да, я да, тебя да, спрашиваю? Да, не кричи, я на Луганск ехал. Как другой стороне, да? Луганск в другой стороне. Да, я же говорю, запутался в Луганск. Это самое. На 80 дороги. километров Документ, вперед. Документы запутались. свои показал. Мог, Быстро. Мог, 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 Давай покажи, что там есть. Оружие все. Ребята, держи руки. Руки держи. Да я не держите все. Забирай. Да перестаньте, я ж никому ничего плохого не делал. Куда я? Все никто плохого не делал, понимаете? Все никто ничего плохого не делал. Забирай. Ложи. Ложи на пол. Ложи, вот. Тихо, тихо. Стоп, 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 стоп. Они прячут. Машина не заправляется. Без сопровождения. Да, ясно. Откуда? Иди. Все, на праве! Да аккуратно! Это это отца, это отпою! Гранаты! Все, машина сзад! Машина сзад! Отошли от машины! Никаких оружий на Донбассе не будет! Позвольте, я уеду и никаких то самое не Уедешь, только уедешь теперь отсюда. Мы хотим мира. Все Where are they going to stop insulting us? When will they stop calling us separatists and terrorists? We get up each morning and we're called separatists. That's how we've started greeting each other. Hello, I'm a terrorist. Hello, I'm a separatist. We're no different from those people, well, except we don't speak Ukrainian. That's the only difference between us. So why is it they hate their own people so much? Where does all this bitterness and hatred come from? What have we done to them to hate us so much? If we're really such a pain in the neck, so hooked on subsidies, why don't they just leave us alone? All we want is the right to determine our own future. Give us a referendum and we'll solve the problems ourselves. They're afraid of a referendum, afraid of their own people, but why? The people have the right to vote. We'll farm the land and work in the mines. Just leave us alone, please. Please, just let us be. We're peace-loving people. I'm from Odessa. I wish I could ask the people how it's come to this. The reason why I don't want to show my face is because, to my mind, 
We live in an undemocratic country which has no freedom of speech. There are lots of kidnappings in Ukraine. It's not at all uncommon for people whose opinions are different to be stopped in the street and beaten. Но пасарам, ну не пройдет фашизм, но пасарам, не пройдет фашизм, нет фашизму, в нашем городе фашизму не будет. Я вам передаю привет от всех, кто сегодня за нами смотрит и следит за нашими событиями. Бог нам поможет. Do you think most people in Odessa support or oppose the Euromaidan? I think about 80% of Odessa residents are against the Euromaidan. The remaining 20 are probably misled or just don't live here permanently. Almost all the locals are against the Maidan. They rallied at the Maidan to make Yanukovych go, and he did. Why are they there now then? What do they want? Personally, I'd say they want the plague of nationalism to spread all over Ukraine. Nobody in the southeast or the rest of the Ukraine needs any of this kind of nationalism. We want the Europe that the Crusaders fought for, the Europe that European nationalists fought for, the Europe of white people. Muslims humiliate the natives now. They take away our lands. We will stand for Europe, the white Europe, the traditional Europe, for the free nation Europe. Glory to the nation! What do you think about the situation in the country? Is it good or bad? It's awful. First, they drove a wedge between us and our Russian brothers. As for me, I'm neither going to travel to Russia nor to anywhere else. I want to live in Odessa. I want everything to be fine. I want us to be friends with Russia. The West is not for us, you know. This union, what's happening in our country? It's a nightmare. How will we survive? For instance, my salary is $92 per month. Can I get by? Gas prices are now about to spike by 73%. The prices for medicines have already been raised by 60%. It's terrible, really terrible. We've been waiting for the Geneva Agreements. We got them and we're very grateful to Russia for them. We understand well that the so-called interim Kiev government, as well as the right sector, the Svoboda party and some other Nazi groups, never meant to fulfill the obligations. They're not going to comply and simply can't. They have different intentions, to cut and kill with the slogan, hang Muscovites on trees. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like we've all been used. They took off our handcuffs and put us in leg irons instead. They're now setting us up against the southeast of Ukraine the same way they set us against the Burkut, the police, Crimeans, and then Russia. I wonder who's interested in it and why. I wouldn't want to be persecuted. Any person who is against the developments in Ukraine may be accused of separatism and really go to jail. That's why I want to stay anonymous.
The Ukrainian parliament adopted a law under which those guilty of acts of separatism and terrorism can be thrown into prison for 10 to 15 years, or even for life. We now fall into this category. I'm not saying that it's you, but your European colleagues. Some European authorities approved it and the Ukrainian parliament adopted the law. They did it. So it appears that you, I mean those European bodies, agree that we're terrorists. Here I am. Do I look like a terrorist? And now I'm facing a life sentence, according to the current legislation. I'm polite and communicate normally. I represent the interests of the people. You have to understand that not everybody can or is willing to put their own life at stake in order to save people. I'll speak about Kharkov only. I won't speak on behalf of Ukraine. Each person must speak up and say what he wants, what he desires. Why are the authorities afraid of the referendum? Why? Are they afraid? Yes, they are. But if they're not, then they must let us say what we have to say. And we will. We are not separatists. We are not radicals. I live in Kharkov. I'm 61. I want to understand where I live, what country I live in. Russia, Ukraine and Belarus need to unite. We shouldn't let Russia down. Russia isn't here. Russia supports us morally, but not physically. Americans are supporting the junta physically. There are troops, there are lots of documents, video materials, printed materials proving this. But nobody's interested. <laughs> Look how many people come to the rallies. Everybody is there, from students to pensioners, even veterans come. Ukrainian TV is spreading lies. They're saying that Russians are being brought in. Is it even possible to bring so many Russians? Look, thousands of people come for rallies in eastern Ukraine. Have they brought half of the Russian population here? They call us extremists. We always ask for permission to hold peaceful rallies, but they refuse us. It seems that the heroes of Maidan are allowed to seize buildings, to rob banks, to kill people, but we're not allowed to hold peaceful rallies. You can see that we are unarmed. We're not wearing masks. We have only one demand. We want to hold a referendum. We want to be heard. You can't force 20 million people into Europe and NATO against their will. <laughs> 